In this Autodesk Maya tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model this orange using a procedural texture in the Arnold render engine. We'll use AI noise in Arnold and Maya to create this texture and make a bump map and use coat to make even more waxy appearances on the orange. The first thing we need to do is model an orange. So we'll quickly do that by grabbing a sphere, then pressing R on our keyboard to scale it up a little bit. I'm going to right click and then I'll enter vertex mode. When I'm in vertex mode, I can go to the modeling toolkit and I can turn on soft selection. If I click one of these points, you'll notice that my soft selection is very high at eight. But if I lower this to something like two and then I click a point, for the scale that I'm at, it's still pretty large. So I might bring this soft selection down to one. And now I have just an area. You can see that the area that is pink is affected less than the area that is yellow. So I'm going to grab a couple points by orbiting around and holding shift. So I'm gonna grab a few of these points around the orange. Maybe I'll grab one up here. And then I can scale these in a little bit, give the orange a few dents. Then I'm gonna randomly do this another way. Click this one, this one, and maybe this one. Then I'll click here. I'll scale those in and then maybe I'll pick a few to scale out. So there's one there. I'll pick a vertex here Then I'll pick another vertex here and I'll pick one more vertex for modeling the orange here and I'll scale those out a little bit. Then I'm gonna grab the center point right here and I'm gonna press W rather than scale. And this is going a little bit too much. I'll put it like that. And then I need to bring it down to probably 0.5 on the soft selection. And then I can just push that down just a little bit more. And then on the bottom, the bottom of an orange is usually pretty flat as well because it gets dented. So we'll do that. And then if I want to give it a few striations on the orange, I can right click in Maya and go to edge mode. And now I want to turn off soft selection. So I'll uncheck soft selection in the Maya modeling toolkit. And then I'll shift click two of these pieces and then I'll go every other one. So I'll select every other edge here by holding shift. As I go around the top of the orange, I'm going to create just the little indentations of the orange peel right there. And you wanna go very little here. So I'm still in box mode or non-smooth mode. So I'll pull this down and you can see how this starts to get pretty distorted real quick. So a little bit goes a long way. We can press three to smooth our model. And you can see I'm starting to get some orange shape there. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to right click and go back to object mode in Maya, hold option or alt and middle mouse button to move. And I think that that'll be my lumpy, my lumpy orange. So now we need to assign a material to this because we want to make a procedural texture in Maya for the orange peel skin. So I'm going to right click, assign a new material, and I'm going to click under Arnold, shader, AI standard surface. So now I have an AI standard surface. It's always a good idea to click on your AI standard surface and label it. So I'm gonna call it orange peel procedure shader. And then I wanna give it a color. So I'll click on the color here and I can go ahead and pick maybe this orange color right here. So now I have this orange. And if I go ahead and add a light, I'll click on Arnold and then I'll click on area light. And if I press W to move the area light, I can move it up. And then I need to rotate the area light down. The area light points the way that arrow is. If I press E to rotate, I can hold J to snap to different degrees, then press W and I can move it up. And then I can press R to scale it. So I can scale it out like this and then scale it a bit like this and then press W, move it up. That's probably pretty good right there. And then I'm gonna create a camera to look at my orange. So I'll go to create, camera, camera. And right now the camera is looking this way, so I'll bring it this direction. Then I'll press E and I'll rotate the camera and I can press J to snap. And it's always easier just to look through the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can do that if you come up to the top of the viewport right click on camera, select camera one. Now I'm looking through camera one and I can decide what I wanna look at. I always turn on the resolution gate so I can really see what I'm going to see. And I think that's pretty good right there. 
So then I can lock camera one so I don't move it by clicking the padlock icon up here. Then I'll right click and switch back to the perspective camera in Maya. So now you can see camera one is right there. Here is my orange. And the last thing I need to do is probably have some sort of background for my orange. I can do that by getting a polyplane. So I'll click in the poly modeling shelf in Maya, click polyplane, press R to scale. I'll scale my polyplane out. Then I'll press W to move it down. And then if I hold V on my keyboard, I can snap to the bottom of the orange. So now it's snapped on the bottom of the orange. And then I need to move some of these pieces. I'm going to scale it a bit more this way and a bit more this way. I'll right click and I'll switch to edge mode. And then I can double click these edges, press W and I can move them up like this. Then I can click this edge, hold shift, double click this edge, move it up like this. Then I can orbit a bit, hold this edge, double click that edge, move it up a bit. And then I can orbit one more time, click this edge, double click this edge, and then move up to the top. So now if I press three, I have a nice smooth curve. I probably want to move this up just a little bit. So then I can, so then I can continue to move those edges as I see fit. Probably some of these need to be moved in a little bit. So I can double click right here, press W, look from the side, and then you can just move this to where you think you need it. And I'll adjust this a little bit right here, double click, move it over to be a bit more vertical. And then finally, this last piece, I'll move over to be more vertical this way. So now I have this nice swoop. Let's go ahead and open Arnold Render View. Open Arnold Render View. And if we press play, we won't see anything because we need to add exposure to our light. You can just see a little bit of the orange right there. So what you need to do is click on your outliner, click on the area light, and then adjust the exposure. Remember, exposure on area lights in Arnold double every time. So if I press six, that's six times the light that was there before. And that's not bad right now. I'll probably go up to seven. Let's see what that looks like. I think seven is a good place to start. But as you can see, our orange is very smooth and shiny. The lumpiness of our orange is looking good, but it doesn't look like orange skin. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna close the Arnold render view, and I'm actually going to close my outliner, and I'll go ahead and dock the render view right here by dragging and then letting go where that blue line is. So there's my orange, so I can start my render anytime. So then I'm gonna click on the hypershade. The hypershade is up at the top here. I'll click on hypershade. And then I have my different colors right here. Here's my orange peel. So I'll right click and then graph the network. So here you can orbit around the same way by alt middle mouse button and scroll wheel zoom. If I click here, I can press tab and I can type AI bump 2D. This is a bump node. And then I can take the out value and I can put it right into the normal camera. So it goes right into the normal camera. Nothing happens yet because there's nothing assigned to this. Then I can click again in the graph, type tab, and I can type AI noise. Now AI noise creates noise and we're gonna edit this noise, but I can't drag the color right into the bump map because we only need black and white values. So I'll just drag the red color into the bump map. And then finally, I need to change the scale. So if I change the scale to 25, 25, 25, and then we go back to the render view and I click play, you're gonna see that I already have some orange peel. And the scale really adjusts it, but it sucks to have to type all three numbers. So we can use a little trick. We can click again and press tab, and then we can type AI user data float. And then we can click the plus button on scale right here. And then we can bring this out value to all three of the scale directions. And then we only need to type here. So then we can type a default value of say 30. And then we can go ahead and look at what that does. And what this allows us to do is to quickly change all three numbers so we can see. So I can go down to 10 and see what that looks like. I can come up to 40 and see what that looks like. So we can see which different ones. I kind of like 40 at this scale. It's gonna be different depending on how big you make your orange or your object, but you can really change how the noise looks. And then we can also actually click on the AI noise and change its complexity. So if I change the octaves, it's going to change its complexity here. 
And if you want to see what's happening, you can isolate selected. So by clicking this button in the Arnold render view, we only see the AI noise. So I can change the lacunarity, which will make it a little bit more contrasty. You can also change the time by pressing one here. So it changes the random seed. And then you can change the distortion. The octaves increase the complexity of the noise. So I think something like this looks good. So I'm going to turn off isolate selected, but the bump map is a little high. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to look at toning this down again. Maybe I'll put 0 0.05 right there. Yeah, I think that's a little bit nicer bump height. So 0 0.005 for the orange. So now we're going to add something more to this to make it look a little bit better. So we're going to click right on this and we can actually add a little roughness to the specular because it's not perfectly smooth. So we'll add a little roughness. And then we're going to add to coat. So here is coat. And if I turn coat all the way up, you'll notice it has like this polyurethane coated on top, but oranges have wax on it. Lots of fruit has wax. So we want to have a coat, but we don't want it to be so smooth. So we're going to use the same trick as the noise to break up the coat. So to do that, we're going to come over here and we're going to zoom in and we'll type tab. AI bump 2D. And to get this AI bump 2D into the coat, we can click on orange peel right here. And then down at coat, you see this normal. We can middle mouse button click on this actual node, AI bump 2D, drag it to the normal of coat. It brings up the connection editor. All we have to do is click out value. And then we have to click coat normal. And we've made a connection. So now this is driving the coat normal. Notice that this is grayed out. So then we need to add our AI noise. We could just drag the same one in to this. So we could drag this out just like that. And they would be exactly the same. You may like that behavior. So uh, that could work really well. Or you may want to change it a bit. So if we bring our coat up, everything is lining up perfectly. So we may or may not like that. So I'm going to break the connection and have the coat be different. So to do that, I have to bring in another AI noise. So I can press tab, type AI noise. And then the out color, remember, we can bring the out color to the bump map. And then we can come over here and use the same thing, tab, AI user data float. And then we'll bring the out values into the scale. So we'll go out value to X, out value to Y, and out value to Z. And then we need to set an initial value. So why don't we try 30 because we have 40 for the other part. And let's see how that's looking. That's starting to look like a nice orange right here. So then we're going to add a few more things. If we look at this noise and then we isolate selected, notice that it's kind of fuzzy and we may want to have a bit more contrast. We can do that with an AI range. So in between the AI noise and the AI bump 2D, we can break this connection type tab and type AI range. And then we can just pump the out color into the input and then the out color here into the bump map. And then if I click on AI range, you can see I'm isolating selected. Make sure you off click. And then I can increase the contrast here and notice how that changes what's happening. And I can also change the contrast pivot to see how much of it. So I kind of want it to be a bit more splotchy where the wax is rubbed on and off. So I kind of like that. And then I can go back to the AI noise and I can give it a time of two. And then I can increase the octaves a bit just to add some complexity. And then I'll come back to AI range to see how that's looking. And now I have to undo show isolated. And now we're starting to get this nice texture here. So then you can go to the bump 2D and change your bump height. So you may or may not want it to be that high. So if I press the bump map up to 0.05, it makes that coat bump a little bit bigger. I'm thinking that looks pretty good for an orange. Now let's go back to the main shader of this orange. So I have my orange right there and I need to hold alt and middle mouse button. And if I click on the main shader, then I can come down to subsurface. So subsurface is if something is transparent. So if I turn subsurface all the way up, you'll notice that it looks like a piece of crystal or glass. 
and the subsurface color is the color that's reflected out. So if I double click this color and we give it like a dark, a dark red color for our orange, the inside of oranges are pretty, pretty dark red, something like that. It makes it look like candy or something translucent. So we don't want it to be that much subsurface. But if we bring this down to just a little bit, especially in the shadows, and then we can change the radius to see how far into the shadow that goes. So we can, we can adjust that a little bit to make it more like an orange. And now, in, especially in the shadows, what light passes through and bounces around, we're really starting to get this to look like an orange. And the last thing we can do is add some sheen. This is glowing around the edges. So if we bring this up, you'll notice all this white around the edges, but we don't want it to be white. So if you put it on green, you'll notice that if I have the roughness very rough, I have a lot. And if I bring the roughness down, I have very little. So you can use a color like this to see where your sheen is coming through. And then you can click and adjust it back to the one you want. So I'm going to click done here. And so now I have this nice orange that is using an entirely procedural texture. It's just a smooth form, but now my AI standard surface shader is procedurally creating this orange peel skin. And I have this nice render. Now I could create a mash object with this and create a fruit bowl or many other things. You can use AI noise and all kinds of other things to create 2D textures with AI standard surface shaders to make procedural textures. Hopefully you're able to use Autodesk Maya, Arnold, and AI standard surface procedural textures to model fruit for yourself. Happy 3D modeling.